welcome to the SIPS Knowledge Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about risk and risk management and we're lucky enough to have a professional, Mr Chris Owen, joining us to talk about his experience within managing risk and health and safety. So good afternoon Chris. Good afternoon. If we could just start the cast please by just telling me a little bit about yourself, your experience and your company please. Yeah, uh, my company is uh, Optimum Safety Management Limited. Um, I've been in health and safety now as a consultant for 13 years. Uh, I have my diploma, my NEBOSH diploma in health and safety. I'm a chartered health and safety consultant. Excellent. Thank you very much. And as part of your consultancy company, do you have any clients that are part of, of a large supply chain, maybe farmers or manufacturers, something along those lines? Yes, I do. Um, uh, in my role in the, in, uh, as a consultant, I've looked after many companies in the past with my old company and currently with my new company as well. Um, so farming, construction, manufacturing and engineering companies. Thank you. And I'm guessing, in your opinion, doing what you do, risk registers are, are pretty important. Can you explain to me and the listeners the importance, in your opinion, please, of having a risk risk register in place? Yeah, it's, uh, it's vitally important uh, within a company. It, I mean, you've got companies that are high risk, medium risk, low risk, but they all must have risk assessments and a robust system in place. They must highlight the hazards within uh, that company and control them through suitable and sufficient risk assessments. And having a robust system in place as well um, means that Anybody that is carrying out any risk assessments must be trained and competent to do so as well. Um, it's not um, advised to be writing any risk assessments yourself unless you've had training to do it. Um, it's not advisable. And I guess that's, that's where your specialist and your expertise come in. You go in and, and speak to your clients and, and help them produce that document. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's... Um, it's really important to have that um, one-on-one training or a group of uh, uh, I train groups of people as well um, to give them the knowledge, to give them the theory, and to do practical uh, assessments during the training. Um, it, it's important to get that hands-on training to make sure that they have the skills um, to go out there and do risk assessments themselves. I understand. And is it possible that you can recall a situation where one of the large clients that we mentioned a moment ago, whether it be manufacturing, engineering or agriculture, where one of your clients didn't have a system in place and, and it caused them a problem? Can you talk me through that? Yeah, I, I once had a call from a, a manufacturing company um, and uh, they were looking at winning a, a, a new contract to supply a new client. Uh, and for this um, contract they needed to provide or uh, have an accreditation in place uh, which means they were assessed externally for their health and safety and uh, 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 compliance um, this is something they couldn't do because they lacked a suitable management system and they lacked the robust risk assessments that were needed so they couldn't get this accreditation um, and what happened was um, until they could get this until they uh, could provide the accreditation and get assessed, they wouldn't be able to supply this new contract. So uh, what they did was they called me, um, I went in, I audited the company, um, I assessed all areas that were needed for the uh, accreditation. Um, and after um, a short length of time of working with them, um, it seemed to be night and day, to be honest, to get it done quickly, I provided them with what they needed and they achieved the accreditation they required. Excellent, and, and that meant then that they were able to carry on and, and fulfill their contractual obligations with the supplier? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It meant that they, uh, they, they got the contract. Um, it was an ongoing contract as well. Uh, they achieved the accreditation they needed. And, and since then, um, they've learned from this as well, and they've now put robust systems in place um, to minimise the, um, the impact on any uh, on the supply chain and any future accreditation that they need to win contracts. So they put in uh, quarterly inspections and an annual audit to make sure that everything is kept up to date 
um, so there is minimal impact in the future. And is it yourself now that goes back in, do you regularly go in and do those reviews with the client to make sure that everything is, is up to date as it needs to be? Yes, I do. Uh, and during those meetings as well, I uh, speak with management as well, see how things are going um, and look to see if there are any gaps within that. And that could be any new equipment since my previous appointment. So the risk assessments need then updating. It should be constantly flowing, really. You might have um, the same equipment for, uh, for a number of years, but you might have different people operating the equipment. Um, you might have to have updates on the equipment and every time the risk assessment registers a different or that they are up to date. I understand, I understand. So moving forward, what piece of advice would you give to procurement professionals with regard to making sure that they try and always manage their supplier's risk? Um, this is something I, I can't stress highly enough, really, that managing risk within the company is of the highest importance. And even more so now because of the uh, sentencing guidelines, which changed in 2016. Uh, there's many companies out there that didn't realise that the guidelines changed uh, and some fines for breaching health and safety have gone up by 400% for failing to manage risks, and these are in the event of a serious accident or fatality. Um, it's not thousands of pounds companies face now, it's hundreds of thousands and even millions in some cases, and it's on the turnover of the company. And many of these are because people have failed to provide suitable and sufficient risk, risk assessments to protect the employees and, and to protect the company as well. And in the worst, you know, in the worst failings, um, individual directors, managers, supervisors are actually being jailed as well uh, for failing their duty to provide certain risk assessments and providing a uh, failing their duty of care. Um, it's so important that um, all um, procedures are documented. Uh, there must be a process for uh, documentation as well to, to ensure that procurement professionals, buyers, um, see that there's a, there's a paper trail in, pray, in place and they can prove that there is a robust system that is continually being assessed and evaluated and updated. That's great, Chris. Thank you very much for your insight, your knowledge and your recommendations there. Appreciate your time. Thank you.